will go first. And then the poor. Next the well to do and let, let, let the wealthy if they want come last or don't come at all. Those who go first will raise themselves to a higher grade on a level with, with, with that whose representatives will shortly follow. The Exodus will thus at the same time be an ascent in class. He's such an optimism. Uh, such an optimist. I guess he is a bit of a utopian. Um, now, and the Christians will benefit because positions will be relinquished by Jews. That's good for them too. Hmm. 214. Oh. Nor will the exodus of Jews in any way be a flight. No, no. It'll be a well-regulated movement. This is what the other Zionists will see at the Zionist Congresses will object to. They'll say, Herzl had Western ideas. Modern ideas. It wasn't Jewish enough, Weitzman will say. You know, we have to have the old Jewish way of doing things the ghetto world. You know, they were frightened by Herzl. And uh, yet I think his vision, if it had been, you know, carried out in the way he foresaw it, would have been even more successful than we have presently seen it be. Um, and again, his premature death is a sad. There's so many deaths that occur that are sad. Lincoln, people like Herzl, who died prematurely, Teddy Roosevelt, things like that that are really uh, unfortunate for the country, for the people that they're involved in. It will be a well-regulated movement under the constant check of public opinion. The movement will not only be inaugurated in absolute accordance with law, it will be lawful, but it can no wise be carried out without friendly cooperation of the interested governments who will derive substantial benefits from it. That's why he starts traveling. That's why he goes to the German Kaiser. That's why he goes to England and speaks to the government. That's why he goes to the Turkish Sultan to explain to them how it would be in their benefit to back this idea. Not as a result of holocausts, but to back it because of the positive benefits that it would bring. To see the ideas carried out responsibly, vigorously, the kind of that kind of guarantee is required, which can be provided by the kind of corporate body with legal terminology called a moral or legal person. So it's very modern. He wants a company, a moral person, to deal with all but property rights. I propose to establish the Society of the Jews as a legal person, a Jewish company, as he calls it. I guess this is what Hitler thinks is the protocols of the elders of Zion. All he wants to do is get a, uh, a, 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 you know, in Israel, you wouldn't know this, but I've been there and I've experienced it and so on. This company exists. You can go in downtown Los Angeles and look it up at the phone book. It's called the Jewish Agency. It's an agency for the settlement of Jews in now Israel in those days in Palestine to regulate, to uh, uh, order, to uh, oversee, to finance, and so on. Uh, and, and that still exists. You can, the head offices are in Jerusalem. It's not a very powerful organization anymore. The Israel government has far uh, exceeded it. But it's this one function it has to uh, uh, oversee and try to help like they do the immigration of Jews from Ethiopia now. Even though they, the rabbis uh, question the um, authenticity of the Jewish character of the Jews in Ethiopia, the Jewish agency uh, Overseas and helps bring them to Israel. And today, if you go to Israel, you'll see Ethiopian Jews everywhere. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, and uh, from Russia or places like that, it's still operating. There's a million Russian Jews have come to Israel since the Iron Curtain fell. Uh, that's a huge number. I'm not sure they're so happy there. They've taken a huge. Uh, downward the spiral in economic uh, well-being and status because the Israelis are not very uh, welcome in terms of uh, relinquishing any of their <laughs> benefits to newcomers. But this agency does still operate in those situations. Um, only an imposter or a madman would even pretend to undertake a monumental task of this on his own further down. If I want to replace an old building with a new one, I must demolish them before I construct. 
Anyway, we need uh, to divide this thing into three sections. The Jewish company, the local groups, and the society of the Jews. Anyway, he goes in to explain how he's going to do it. The society will be constructed first. So he's very practical. Not only is he, is he not utopian and far-seeing, he is far-seeing, but he's also very practical. He wants to get to work and do it. Anyway, um, although I speak here in terms of reason, I'm well aware that reason alone will not suffice. Long-term prisoners do not willingly quit their cells. What did Marx say in the Communist Manifesto? Workers of the world, throw off your chains or something like that. You have only, you know, yourselves to blame, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I think he's well aware of all these uh, previous pamphleteering that has gone on. We shall see whether the youth, which is more ripe, will be ready for this. Uh, and they will bring the aged behind them, bearing them on powerful arms, transforming rationality into enthusiasm. Well, we hope that that <coughs> happened. I'm not sure if it did. Okay, the Jewish question is the next part. Even the equality that was granted, he says, is now in his own days almost a dead letter. People go around and say, don't buy from the Jews. And of course, in the Nazi period, they even label them, put yellow stars on them, put yellow stars on their business operations, smash things, and so on. So, you know, civilized Europe, as he said, most of this equality was a dead letter. And he goes into a few examples. I'm not trying to arouse sympathy. You know, that's nonsense to try to get sympathy from people. And it's as futile as it is dishonorable. There it is again, dishonorable. It's not honorable. Herzl has dignity and honor. That means a lot to him. He's not trying to, you know, ingratiate himself. You know, everywhere, next page, one hears the cry, particularly in Berlin, sort of Juden Rouse. We hear it actually in the movies in Hollywood, too. Out, out, out for the Jews. Can we hope for better days? I say we cannot hope for this current to shift. That's amazing. 1897, he knows it's not only not going to shift, it's going to get worse. I don't know how he knows. This guy is a visionary, obviously, and a genius. I mean, I'm sure if I were living in 1897, I wouldn't have been able to see what was going to happen in 1937.